that point. Um, go on, Richard, verse 27. And Enoch beheld angels descending out of heaven, bearing testimony of the Father and the Son. And the Holy Ghost fell upon many, and they were caught up by the powers of heaven in the Zion. So a point of clarification there is Enoch and his city were translated, which we'll talk about in a few moments, taken from the earth without tasting death. But they weren't the only ones. That is, there were other, other individuals subsequently who were translated uh, before the time of Noah. Uh, Joseph Smith translation of uh, Genesis chapter 14 tells us that all men, all people, uh, coming up to this order of God were taken to God, were translated. translated now, Kesedic was such a man as mm -hmm. well. And his city. Again, and city. Uh, yeah, good point. Again, we have a window into the nature and order of the society. The Lord is taking these people off. He, he, he isn't salting the earth with righteousness. But rather, the earth is so corrupt that in order to preserve the righteous, he is lifting them off as, as he can. The earth seems to be in a very helpless state here. We're not trying to rede redeem the earth anymore. We're trying to gather those from the earth that we possibly that's, that's can. That's an interesting the type return. for the gathering, mm -hmm. isn't it? Because right. what we're doing is we're gathering the righteous out of a wicked world into the place of safety, prior to the destruction of the earth. And that's accomplished one of a home, two of a city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We seldom gather in multitudes. Yeah. Seldom as ever. Well, the purpose of the gathering, too, is it not to create a Zion society like unto the society that Enoch presided over? Would you say the heavenly city? That's right. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that one of the things that that is telling us is that we, we may be selling... Uh, uh, Noah assured as a missionary when we say he went out all of these years and without success. Well, no, well he, he may have had he may have had some converts, and they, it was uh, and, and, and it wouldn't be true that Noah, his three sons, and their wives were the only people who were saved. No, no one saved on the on earth. On the yeah, earth. Others had taken salvation. The others had uh, a greater salvation. Sure. Okay. Go ahead, Richard. Uh, here, we, the next the verses that follow give us some remarkable insights not only into Enoch but into God. And we talked about this in our early conversations about what we learn about God. Richard, read for us. Starting with 28. 28. And it came to pass that, that the God of heaven looked upon the residue of the people, and he wept. And Enoch bore record of it, saying, How is it that the heavens weep, and shed forth their tears as rain upon the mountains? And Enoch said unto the Lord, How is it that thou canst weep, seeing thou art holy, and from all eternity to all eternity? What's the question he's asking? What, what is it that... You you're bigger than this. Place. You're beyond this. Yeah, how, what, how can this touch you? Well, you why got, does the greatest being in the universe weep? Yeah. You've got worlds without number, as we know. Why would this bother you? Okay, what, what follows to me is just so touching, so tender. Go ahead. Starting with verse 30. Mm -hmm. And were it possible that a man could number the particles of the earth, yea, millions of earths like this, it would not be the beginning to the number of thy creation. So there, there he's still asking the question. But now he begins to sense something, I think, as, he, yes. as this is said. And thy curtains are stretched out still, and yet thou art there, and thy bosom is there, and also thou art just, thou art merciful and kind forever. To me, the last part of that verse implies he, something powerful about God. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, and also Enoch is beginning to under, answer his own question. Yeah, that's right. that's, that's exactly what That's, that's what's happening. He's gaining understanding as he's asking. Yeah. Thou art there. One day this phrase hit me, and, and it's, it's a bit pithy and maybe a little silly, but it gets at the point that God's infinity does not preclude either his immediacy or his intimacy. Mm -hmm. Very well. And this, and this comes through clearly here. Yet you're there. You're there. Your bosom is there. Your feeling. The seed of your emotions. Uh -huh. And thou hast taken Zion to thine own bosom from all thy creations, from all eternity to all eternity. Which implies that Enoch's city is but a pattern of what has happened elsewhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what's That's right. described here? And not but peace, justice, truth is the habitation of thy throne, and mercy shall go before thy face and have no end. How is it thou canst weep? And God said unto Enoch, Behold these thy brethren. 
They are the workmanship of mine own hands. And I give unto them their knowledge in the day that I created them. In the garden of Eden gave I unto, the, unto man his agent. He's starting to answer why, and what is it? Why is it you're concerned about the meaning of gas? And God answers, they're the workmanship of mine yeah. own hands. Yeah. It's one thing to create a tree. <laughs> it's another thing to have children. children. That's right. You, you appreciate the trees, and you love the grass, and it's wonderful to have shrubbery. And, you, and you're grateful that that dog uh, takes good care of the family. That's not quite the same as my son and my daughter. Yeah, exactly. And unto thy brethren have I said, and also given commandment, that they should love one another, and that they should choose me, their father. But behold, they are without affection, and they hate their own blood. What a, what a statement. Oh, yes. You can't read all of this, but... As, you, as a parent, you can feel... Sure. for oh, yes. the divine parent of the universe and we've all experienced a little bit of that with the squabbles that occur in the family you don't want your children to hate each other you want them to take advantage of all of the opportunities you've tried to prevent to provide for them so one, one of the one of the points or areas that, that we had to skip over but I'm going to come up to it back to it albeit briefly and that is the fact that one of the things that Enoch sees is a battle that is going to take place that is nothing less than genocide. Mm -hmm. They they hate their own blood. This this isn't a lot of, of people that don't know their ethnic roots. We're so early in the history of this church that everybody can trace their genealogy back to Adam mm -hmm. and yet one tribe is going to exterminate another tribe. They hate their own blood. Yeah. With, with that context, uh, project us forward uh, to the book of Revelation, which is why God, through John, summarizes this period of Earth's history as warfare. Yes. Yeah. Enoch's mm -hmm. period, that thousand-year block of time, is a period filled with Good. violence and war. Yep. Mm -hmm. To war, warring and to war. We're just moving up in this would you, area. Would you read for us now? We'll, just, we'll, we'll close off this little conversation here with verse 37. But behold, their sin shall be upon their he the heads of their fathers. Satan shall be their father, and misery shall be their doom. And the whole heaven shall weep over them, even all the workmanship of mine hands. Wherefore should not the heavens weep, seeing thee shall suffer? Uh, can you imagine young Joseph Smith writing this on his own? I mean, uh, what is he now, 24 in 1830? at this point maybe approaching 25 but the, the majesty of the words should not the heavens weep seeing these shall suffer mm -hmm. yeah it would have been so interesting to be a fly on the wall and to try to see or understand joseph's reaction as these things were coming can you imagine what he would have been feeling mm -hmm. oh. i think 36 is significant in it okay. it indicates that uh, of all the workmanship of his hands, this is the very wickedest. Uh, you know, not only is is it wicked, but it you know, out of these billions of worlds that I have created, this is the very wickedest. And and there's will you know a special reason for weeping because of it. Yes, the plumb the depths of wickedness like no other planet has ever done before. Let's turn our attention, if we can, to the latter part of chapter seven to Enoch's vision. Again, what are we reading? We're reading a long vision, if you will, of, of Enoch's day and the future. Mm -hmm. 